What is going on fellow web developers? My name is Tyler Potts and in today's video we're going to be starting a new series on Discord JS version 13 with slash commands. So I need a Discord uh, bot for my surfer. Currently I only have me six. Uh, very good, awesome bot, but I'm very limited to what I can do without paying extra and I could pay extra to support the developers who have done a really good job and I probably will for other surfers. But for my surfer and for the, the love of learning and teaching others, I shall be creating my own bot to do everything, everything we need it to do. It's going to be leveling up, it's going to be giving me updates, it may do quizzes, I don't know. We came up with a big list of things we wanted to do on a stream the other day and they are now inside of Notion and I will show you those as we're going through and what we're working on. But today's video is going to be focused on getting the foundations laid, the base set up, we're going to get our bot ready from Discord, uh, we're going to get our token, we're going to basically set up a Node.js application and we're going to install uh, Basically get our bot in our server ready to go, maybe with one command just to test it out so we can know it is working great. So guys, if you are ready for this, do not forget to leave a thumbs up and we are about to get started on a new journey in Discord JS. Okay guys, so now we need to go to the Discord developer portal to actually create our application. Now to do that, what you want to do is head over to discord.com forward slash developers forward slash applications. If you're not logged in, it will ask you to log into your Discord account. Once you're logged in, you'll be able to see the screen icon without Streletsia as an application, of course. Now, to create our application, what we need to do is go to new application and give it a name. I'm going to name mine Ghost CT, but you give yours any name you desire. Click create. And here you can change the icon or you can get the name or whatever. For now, we don't need any of this. That's all fine. We don't need to go to OAuth2. And we need to basically select bot. And down here we can select the permissions we want. And we're going to give it administrator, which is 8, which is great. Then let's go over to bot. And we actually need to create a bot. So let's click add. Yes, do it, and then it's going to create us a bot. Now, we can give the bot a different username if we want, but I'm going to leave it the same. We're going to need this token for later, but for now, just ignore it. I am going to turn off public bot, because I only want it to be able to go onto surface I invite it to for now. And then if we go down here, you can see there's two things here. This one, presence intents, which can track the presence data. And then surfer members. So we want to, we're probably going to need both of these later on down the line. So just click those on and turn them on. However, if you don't think you're going to need them, then you don't have to have them on. Now let's go back to OAuth 2. And I just realized I need to click this again and click administrator because um, I, I forgot that resets when you click away. And then we need to copy this link. And that's going to invite our bot to our Discord surfer. So let's copy, open up a new tab and paste. Hit enter, and now you can see it says, go CT bot, connect to Discord. And we're gonna pick our Potsy Coding Cafe. I'm gonna click continue, and it's gonna ask me what are the permissions I want. I want an administrator, I trust my own bot. I mean, as long as nobody else hacks it, which I doubt they will, we should be good. Let's click authorize. Now, this is quite ironic. It's asking me if I'm a human while I'm creating a bot. Um, I am human, thank you, thank you for noticing. And then here we are. So you may now close this window, it is now done. Look how cool the little stars look. Anyway, so if we go over to here, bot testing, you can see on the right, we actually have Ghost CT who is inside our, inside, um, our offline stairs. So he's currently offline, so we need to get him online. I'm also going to give him the role of bot boys in my surfer. There's no real need, you don't have to do that. It's just because that's where my bots go. So Bot Boy is here and he's currently ready to uh, be tested. But we need to actually set up a Node.js application. So let's close this and let's go down into a folder. So I have an empty folder here. I'm going to open up with Visual Studio Code. You can use any text editor. Visual Studio Code is my preference. And before I do anything in here, what I need to do is open up the terminal and write npm init hyphen y 
And now this is going to create as a package.json file. Obviously, if you do npm and it says this does not exist, you need to install node and npm. You should install node 16, version 16 or above because it has all the features that Discord v13 uses. So once we have our package.json, you can see in here, I'm just going to rename this to bot because I like naming my bot. It makes sense to me. And then we can just delete these scripts for now. Um, we'll add a, uh, a custom one in there soon. And there you go, that's all we need in our package. So I'm just gonna open up my terminal again. And what I'm gonna do is say npm install or just i, and I'm gonna install discord.js and .env. I will explain what these do when we come around to them. Obviously discord.js is the, um, the package we're using and .env is, well, .env. So, I'll see you once it's done. Okay, now that it's done, what I'm gonna do is also run npm i, but this time hyphen d to install a dev dependency, and it's gonna be nodemon. Now, nodemon's gonna allow us to restart our server without having to restart our server. It basically restarts our server every time we make a change to our files. So there we go, if we just clear this, that should now be done. So let's close that down, go into our package, and you'll see here we have two dependencies and one dev dependency. So now that is done, we're going to go in here and we're going to create a bot.js file and we're going to get a client and some intent. So I'm going to say client intent from, oh, sorry, is equal to require and we're just going to say discord.js. So we're going to get client and intent from discord.js. We then want to also do require dot env dot config so what this is going to do is going to set up process dot env or process process dot env dot token or whatever we want to use so we can actually get stuff from a dot env file and there you go we then need to set up our actual client so i'm just going to use lower case client and we're going to say it's equal to a new client dot no, a new client and then the options will be in here and we can say intents and we need to have intents now what are intents so this is new in discord uh, version 13 i believe and intents are basically the functionality your bot has so here we can say intents dot flags dot guilt and what that does is basically say we want access to guilds which are surface so we want to have surfer functionality we then want to say intents dot flags dot guild messages now what that's going to do is give us access to the messages inside of our client and the client is our bot so inside of a guild we'll be able to get the guild messages and there we go so we have those three things we now need to actually log on we need to be able to go here so we need to say client dot login and this will log us in but as you can see this requires a token um, which is a string and obviously the token is from our bot and you can see it here now i'm going to click to reveal this so you can see it but i'm going to refresh this and regenerate after so you cannot use this token don't ever let anyone get access to your token because if they do they can control your bot and do god knows what with it so i'm going to hit copy and i'm going to go back in here and i'm going to create a new file called dot env and in here i'm just going to say token and i'm going to set that equal to the token just like that and then close that down and then this dot env will now be will be able to access it so what we can say is process dot env dot token just like that and that will give us access to our token now if we go to our package.json we can now set up a new script and this script is going to be called def for development and we're basically just going to say nodemon, so the package we installed earlier, bot.js. Now what this is going to do is it's going to basically, every time we make a change in here, it's going to update automatically for our server, so we do not have to keep running it over and over again. So let's say npm run dev, and that is going to start our bot just like that. Now, how do we know if that's working? Well, if we come back into our bot testing or our server, you'll see our bot is now online. He's no longer offline, he's online. But if we want a more official in the terminal, we can actually do something called on ready. 
So we can say client.on, and you can use once, which we'll call it once, which is probably the better option to use. So we're going to say on a uh, once ready, um, we're going to call an arrow function that says console.log ghost is online. Just like that, and now if we go back, where's the error? Unexpected token, that's fine. If we save, it should fix that issue. And there you go, you can now see it says ghost is online. And if we go back to our area, obviously nothing's changed here, but ghost is still online, meaning he's still working, which is great. But ghost can't currently do anything. He can't reply to us, he can't message. And I'm not gonna leave this tutorial without showing you how to at least get a message. So let's go in here and let's say client, dot on and now we can say message create so when a new message is created we can pass through a message which will be the message that has been created and we can say if message dot contents content dot starts with and now we can give a prefix here which i'm going to use this little back tick or not little back tick this little arrow uh, the greater than sign, I believe, or less than. One of them's less than and one's greater than, and I just know it's one of them. Uh, but we're gonna have that sign, and then we're just gonna say if message.content.substring, and we're gonna say one, which is gonna remove the um, this element, this prefix from our message, is equal to, and let's just do this default ping or pong, Ping is ping, isn't it? So if we're doing a ping message, we're gonna say message dot reply. And we'll just say pong, just like that. And there we go. That should now give us a good message to go on. So let's go back to Discord. Oh, I just refreshed Discord. Don't know why. Hopefully it doesn't take too long to refresh. I, I felt like I was refreshing my browser. I'm obviously so used to web development. And here we are. So now if we just said ping, nothing's going to work but if we now do this and ping and hit enter you can see we get pong so we went ping test you can see no it works because it only works with the first value which is fine uh, but i'm going to show you how to actually properly handle uh, both uh, text messages or message uh, commands and also slash commands so we're going to add slash commands to this in a later video um so yeah, guys, if you learned something new in this video, please leave a thumbs up. Obviously, we're gonna be doing a lot more of these series. We're gonna be doing a bunch of different features. We're gonna be doing even voice features. So I wanna be able to go to a voice chat, have Ghost jump in the voice chat and give me some responses when we speak. Now that's, I've never done that before, so I don't know if it's gonna work, but we'll find out. But anyway, guys, don't forget to leave a thumbs up, smash that subscribe button. And if you're new around here, don't forget to check out the links in the description. You can join our Discord server or you can even become a member of the channel to support the channel further. So guys, thank you for tuning into this video and peace out.